Hello everyone, welcome back to another Battle Brothers Guide. Today I'm going to be looking at a build that I've just recently started trying out. It is the... it's a polearm duelist. And one may ask, rightfully so, why would you ever consider creating a polearm duelist? Now, um, so I have to do... well, I'm make, doing a cur currently uh, playing a challenge run called Horrible Hybrids where everyone on my team has to have quick hands by the end of level 11. So I have to incorporate quick hands into builds. And so, um, I thought, I like polearm spec, I love polearm spec, and I love duelists. And so 5 and 4 for AP cost means, um, I'm kind of getting the best of both worlds here. And then you stand still, swing with your bill hook, and then you switch and you swing with your fighting axe, and that's 9 AP. And a lot of times, if you're standing still, that's totally, like, plausible. And if you berserk, you can swing again with your fighting axe. Like, it's totally just works. So, I built three of these dudes. We have the good old Kingsguard, who uh, I may or may not have fished for by reloading events. We have uh, this dude here with just iron lungs. Um, kind of just took the first guy with good melee attack that I could see, because I'm on day, like, 584. I was not about to wait forever to find new people. And then I made a nimble version of this uh, build, which I think I actually prefer. I think I prefer the nimble build to the the um, the Battle Forge build, just because of the way that the perks work out. So you'll see on either side we have the um, on screen. I should have the uh, perk list down, and then uh, so nimble and then Battle Forge. So we're gonna go through that real quick. We start off. Uh, let's go through the Battle Forge build. They're very quite similar. So, this is my first dude, and then uh, the second build has uh, dropped Rotate. He should take Colossus, I think, but he, I'm giving him the, the Idrock armor, which re reheals, which heals 10 hit points. So, I haven't taken Colossus, but that is not indicative of the build, because not everyone has freaking Idrock armor. And then we have the Nimble build, and we'll go over that a little bit after. So, starting with Battleforge, we have Student, uh, then you go Quick Hands. And you go brawny, and you go pole arms back. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, I like running around with pole arms. You know, it's pretty good. Good for leveling bros too, because you put them in the back and a pole arm. They don't have to really worry about being in the front line. Although this is a front line build. Then we're gonna go underdog. Underdog is kind of the perk I would actually drop for Colossus if need be. Uh, maybe weapon spec. Maybe I would drop weapon spec. It depends. Um, like this guy has a, a minus two fatigue on use axe, so I don't. I haven't taken weapon spec on him. But uh, otherwise, it'd be, you know, he's got 65 stam, and if I'm swinging this and it costs 13 to use the fighting axe, it's kind of a lot. And this is a very mobile build, so uh, I would probably I would probably drop underdog if need be. Uh, next, we have Battle Forge because this is the Battle Forge version of this build. Then we have Berserk, Recover. And then we go into so so far you're actually just a um, a polearm a, a two-handed polearm user, a two-handed polearm user, just a pure polearm user. Which uh, isn't that great of a build. You could even run this guy as a two-hander up until then. They like, just give him a great axe, and then once he, uh, but once he gets duelist, that is when he becomes this build. Well, I guess you could do it normally. Otherwise, just not great extent. But duelist allows him to, you know, zero thirty-seven ignore armor. Just really good. This is just a pure regular fighting axe. It's really great. Uh, you know, this axe right here. Oh, what is this? Uh, it's more effectiveness versus armor. It's like an all right axe I found. You know what I mean? You, you have, you, I have a, a mace here. If you have a, I probably wouldn't do a cleaver. If I found a, a good cleaver, I would probably give it to, um, like a whip cleaver build like this, or, or this rather. But you know, just any good old duelist weapon would really work. And then we're gonna, gonna go finish off with uh, Colossus, like I said, or Underdog, eh. and then uh, Killing Frenzy. Oh, did I put weapon spec on there? Interesting. I meant to put weapon spec on the. Uh, on my preview picture, it should it'll, it'll be up on the screen. But you take weapon spec at the end just to save yourself on the stam. If you have really good stam, I guess you can not take weapon spec. Now on to the uh, oh there on the bottom. On to the um, nimble version of the build. Uh, very very similar. You just take nimble. Nimble allows you to not take brawny. Instead you take colossus, but you're already taking colossus. Like hypothetically on the regular build. So since you're just losing, um, taking Brawny, you can definitely take up Underdog and the Weapon Spec. Maybe, yeah, maybe even Gifted if you're, like, super high on Stam. I just think Nimble 
works um this works really well i prefer battleforge so i probably I, I i overall i prefer battleforge but nimble on this build is really great so this build is um it's very very mobile i'm about to we're gonna go watch a fight in a few minutes i'm gonna be doing an ancient undead fight which is one which is like where you don't move like at all um you kind of just stand there and destroy sh stuff but what i like about this build is you know you can move two and attack with your um pole arm and then so you can actually attack from four tiles away i'm even i would not even be i was thinking maybe even pathfinder could work if you went nimble if you go colossus i don't think you can go kept pathfinder i wouldn't drop underdog for pathfinder I, maybe i would i don't know i'd have to really try that out because i love i love pathfinder on uh, these pole arm dudes but um you know it's a very mobile build you can move to and attack with the duelist weapon or you can attack with the pole arm so you can attack from four away if you're standing still you get two attacks which actually might be um just as great as a single two-handed swing from like a normal weapon maybe not like this legendary sword or the legendary axe or this legendary cleaver but your normal great axe your normal uh flanged mace or whatever could probably be comparable damage to this this probably also isn't just as good as a two duelist weapons like i can maybe swing this and get uh and do a little bit more damage than this in the bill hook. But what I love about this build is it allows me to... Uh, I don't have to be adjacent to dudes to hit them. Because I have the, the bill hook. So you have a frontliner. So it allows you to tag team people. Like think... Um, like for brigands or these ancient dead we're about to see. You can... If you put these guys next to each other, they can kind of focus fire the same dudes. And they can also hit back rows. Because you're in the front line. Typically your pole arms are in the back. Like, you know, my... Where's my... Like this regular pole arm guy? Pole arm crossbow. He's in the back, so he can only, with his pole arm, can reach and hit the front. But these dudes here are in the front, so when they uh, use their pole arms and hit, they can hit back rows, like they can hit uh, legionaries with pole, they can hit the legionaries with the ancient bladed pikes. They could hit billmen in noble fights. They could hit um, like art cross like brigand marksmen or whatever, or just orcs that are in the back or uh, barbarians that have rotated themselves out or goblins, you know so many things you can actually do because you have a pole arm in the front line that can reach over their front line which is so great and then you know like I've, I've already kind of alluded to this but if you're two tiles away from another dude on the front line and oh you're this guy next to him missed but now this dude with the bill hook can go and hit him and then he can quick switch with quick hands and then hit the guy in front of him with the uh the duelist axe it's great this build is so so flexible and that's why i think i like it it's very flexible it's a very mobile build. You know, you could start um, pole arms on the front line again. If enemies come to you at the beginning, like nobles or brigands, they will run up to you one away. You hit them with the bill hook. You can actually move two back. You can still move two back. You didn't even have to move forward. So then the enemies don't, you get, they get hit. And then they don't hit you because they didn't, they can't run up to you on the first turn. So then you uh, move back on the next turn. They run up to you again, but they move three because you're now three away from them you move back to and then they still can't hit you and then you hit them again and then since right in front of you you hit them with this switch hit them with that it's amazing this build is so so flexible so now i'm gonna you know little, take a little cut we're gonna go into an ancient undead fight and you're gonna watch as i'd probably destroy them in about three rounds let's see that all right pretty standard uh ancient undead tactics i move back to so the undead will run into me and they won't shield wall and their pikes won't hit me so, we're going to watch this in action. I think this guy passed, so he can still attack me later on. Oh, he didn't. Okay, never mind. So, kind of boring, just, you know, sitting here. But we can definitely see our three, uh, three dudes here in the center. We can watch them in action. I know this isn't the most, uh, this isn't the, most, the perfect fight for them. But, uh, I was, you know, I had it. I figured, you know, you could definitely hit some pole arms. Except there happened to be just shield dudes in front of them, so that's a little sad. But nevertheless. Alright. Um. Alright. Uh, I just brought this. I'm just leveling a monk, of all things. Alright. Uh. Okay. Ow. Here, 
here. Move in. Alright. Taunt. That is too bad that that guy didn't end up dying. Alright. Uh, taunt. Alright. Uh... Alright, here we go. So, let's, um... Hit. Smash. Wait for them to come up to me. Hit. And miss. Too bad that they are all... Shield walling. That's a little bit unfortunate. I swear this fight was easier in the the last time I did it. But you're able to see these three were um they were good at they could all focus fire and then now they're gonna get some extra hits. Obviously they're, they're missing because it's an Asian dead shield walling, which is a pain in the ass. But nevertheless, uh, I could probably just I could have gotten better terrain. But we'll see that in action. Alright. Good. Alright. Oh, uh, we'll just move in. Destroy that guy. Nice. So he did get his two hits in. Um. Throw it there. Good. Alright, uh, let's beat the shit out of here. Nice. And then we can hit, move two, still attack with the polearm spec, which is fantastic. You're gonna go help over here. Nice. Guess it was a wasted taunt, but so be it. Uh, let's get rid of that. Not, not bad. Uh, really, I know this is like a very, very short demonstration of what these guys can do, but I think just putting some sort of gameplay in here, uh, however small, is going to be very helpful. All right, here's my amazing thrower. Sure, javelins. I don't, I don't give a shit what he does. Nice. Not quite. Alright, uh, boom. He runs up. Love the polearm spec, just being able to do things like this. Good. Running around. Taunt. Please did get a kill. Not quite. That's too bad. Alright, and that was the fight. I, again, I know this wasn't very much, but... Uh, can we swing a flail? Nice. Okay. <laughs> hey, legendary armor. Cool. That was pretty easy. Uh, you did see a little bit of what those guys were capable of. I know it's quick. But I think you should try this build out for yourself. I really do enjoy it. It doesn't replace um, the standard build, but I could definitely see if you had a whole team of... Um, you could probably also do a thing where you just take... Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. You could probably take... Um, Two-handers, quick switch with bill hooks. You can make a whole bill, like uh, bill hook, pole arm team. That could really be something. So, hope you found this a little and helpful, informative. Maybe spark some new ideas for yourself. Comment below if you have suggestions on how to make this build better. I'd love to hear them. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.